Ah. Well, 162 has come and gone. The Blue Jay season's over. You are Locked On Blue Jays, your daily Toronto Blue Jays podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to Locked On Blue Jays. Thank you for making Locked On Blue Jays your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel. You can start the season with a big return on FanDuel. Place your first $5 bet and you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. As always, I'm Braden Iwasco. He's Carter First. You can find us on Twitter, braden 5 Wasco. Carter First, too, as well on Instagram and TikTok, at Locked On Blue Jays as well. If you're new here on YouTube, make sure you drop that subscribe button. It really helps us out, keeps us at the top of your page. You don't miss any Blue Jays information. A uh, couple other housekeeping things here. Uh, the Our merch sort of shop is out. Support us if you like some of the designs, whatever. Rep the Locked On Blue Jays uh, anytime. Link in description. Uh, locked on or locked on blue jays dot my spread shirt shirt shop dot ca um and then it's also, also in the description if you guys were wondering yeah it's also our discord link is in the description where you guys can join and talk blue jays with us anytime you want um besides that i mean honestly there's only so much to get into here game 170 162 is come and gone we're gonna give you guys just how we're doing honestly how, how are we feeling about the season being over and a couple of the season highlights, uh, sort of just a, it's just going to be a big look back episode. How is everybody honestly doing? I mean, Carter, let's start with you. My God, just game's over. Season's over. How do you feel? Yeah, I'm going to address the elephant in the room. I got a haircut, obviously. So we'll get that out of the way right now. Uh, the, my overall impressions, I got the helmet on for a reason. I, I wanted to go in the game. I wanted to go in today. They, they, no fight. No fight whatsoever. You get swept by the Marlins. It's good for the tankathon, obviously, but... Boy, does ever leave a bad taste in your mouth to end the season. Two and ten in the last twelve games. I, we wanted to tank, so we were kind of asking for this. I can't harp on them too much, but the brand of baseball over the last two weeks just uh, it's it's tough. It's tough to even remember any of the the positive parts about this Toronto Blue Jays season, even though there isn't many of them. Especially when you end off the season the way they did. Part of me is happy it's over. Obviously, this is a forgotten season. We're gonna look back at this twenty twenty four Toronto Blue Jays team. And hopefully not take a lot away from this year. Hopefully it's just an abnormal year. Hopefully it's the year of Bo Bichette just not existing. Hopefully that's how it is written in history. We just need better things. Hopefully it does not get any worse. Because if it does, it's just going to be a long year of baseball. But I don't even know how that's possible. Yeah, uh, I'm sort of in the same boat. I, I almost feel just I'm happy that it's done because, yes, it was a bad year. It was a bad season. Uh, but the other part of me is like, wow, baseball's done. I don't care about any of these other teams, really. I mean, I'll still watch. It's the playoffs. I'm going to be tuned in. But it's not the same. Baseball without the Toronto Blue Jays just isn't the same. It's sad. It sucks. Um, it's going to be a crazy offseason. There's going to be so, so much stuff to talk about. So, you know, so many media outlets saying this and that and whatever else and i'm gonna put about zero belief into any of that until the papers are signed uh so we'll have to wait and see sort of what happens this off season and, and we're gonna do a, some crazy deep dives and some into some guys into free agents uh into the bow and vladdy extension everything like that that's all coming uh from us here in the next little bit uh but yeah i don't know that game just felt like a nothing burger to me i we were watching it and it's two nothing for the longest time and i'm just not caring it was sort of to the point where i just ah i just wanted it to be done and now it's done and now i wish there was more blue jays baseball all i wanted from this last game of the year i've said this on the podcast i wanted to win but that's i guess there's two things i wanted i obviously wanted to win I wanted vladimir Guerrero jr to get 200 hits so bad they put him in the lineup for a reason you look at the lineup there was you could tell what was going on they have there's like none of the regulars in you're getting these prospects kind of lead it off there. And then you have Vladimir Guerrero Jr. leading off the game at DH. You don't have him in the field, obviously. You just want him to get to that 200 clip. So John Schneider did try his best to get uh, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Jr. to get that uh, career accolade. Does not get it done. Gets walked in the eighth inning. You could tell he he had it on his mind. He got walked. There's not much you can do. It was a bad pitch. He kind of he looks at the dugout, and they take him out of the game. Uh, that's a little bit unfortunate. But, I mean, if anything was going to go right with the Toronto Blue Jays season, I want it to be that. But if I learned anything from the 2024 Toronto Blue Jays season, I should have knew that that was not in the cards for this team. 
Yeah, I know. I know. It's sort of gut, like a little bit of a gut punch. You think you're going to get at least something out of the season, right? You, you were watching for one thing, glad to hit 200, and it's a gut punch. And then you saw him sort of walk off the field after he got walked in the eighth there, Carter, and you sort of just knew. You're like, oh, well, the last little shred of hope for the Toronto Blue Jays, the last little glimmer of light is gone. And a nice little send-off for Vladdy uh, to end the season with a walk, walks off the, the diamond, standing ovation from all the, the fans, which is nice to see. Uh, I don't know, my guy. Uh, like, we, where do we go from here? Like, now what are you looking forward to? Like, are you looking forward to the, uh, you know, the World Series? Or are you just looking forward to what is this offseason going to look like? So I'm, I'm a Toronto Blue Jays fan, I would say more than I'm even a baseball fan, but I obviously do love baseball, but I love the Toronto Blue Jays. So I will be watching uh, games, obviously, throughout this, uh, the playoffs. I'll definitely take a step back. Definitely not going to watch every single game like I have been doing. So that, that is one of the, the small benefits, I guess, we do get from the Toronto Blue Jays being in the offseason that we don't have a game to watch every single day, which is, again, there's good things about that. There's bad things about that. We'll, uh, we'll obviously have to ride that roller coaster as we go through the offseason. But where do we go from here? That's a great question. You can't really look at free agency with MLB playoffs still going on. You can't really look at trades. You can look within. You can look at coaching staff. There might be some firings. Like, again, small firings. I don't expect John Schneider to be fired. Don't expect Ross Atkins to be fired. We'll get into all that in this offseason. Where do we go from here? There's really nowhere to go until the playoffs are done. There's not too much to talk about with the Toronto Blue Jays until we get a, a World Series champion, whoever that is. Obviously not being the Toronto Blue Jays. But you, you can't speculate about anything if you're not allowed to do anything so it's just kind of a, a dull moment uh it's not, not going to be a lot going on for the next month at least in toronto blue jays land so i guess uh all i can say about that is take the time there is time away from the toronto blue jays you have it right here pick, watch the uh watch for some world series games whether it's in the playoffs me and you are probably going to pick a team as we're, i think we're going to go over the third segment we'll uh go over who we're going to ride with for this playoffs i suggest you guys do the same thing playoff baseball is awesome to watch doesn't matter who it is. Again, you want it to be the Toronto Blue Jays. Not going to work out like that, unfortunately. Still fun to watch. I encourage you guys to watch some of these games because these moments, you saw how it was in 2015, 2016, as we were reminiscing a little bit off camera and on the live stream uh, for this podcast about that team. But uh, yeah, just take some time away. It's a lot of other sports going on in Canada. Uh, you're running out of summer. You're running out of this fall weather. Get outside. So uh, I guess take the, take the positives of the Toronto Blue Jays not playing baseball and uh, apply them to your life. Yeah, I mean, it just sucks. And you hit the nail on the head. Where do we go from here? Not anywhere. We nowhere go nowhere. Fast, that's for sure. Yeah, it's going to be a month or so of sort of just dullness within sort of the league for Toronto Blue Jays fans. There's not a whole lot going to happen. Maybe you might hear about a little bit of a Bo Bichette, Vladimir Guerrero extension stuff like that. That stuff can still all happen within this time. So, you know, keep your you know your ear out for that. Um, and, and when that happens, we'll for sure have the podcast out for you guys to listen to, and we'll break everything down. Um, but yeah, there's there's no trades, there's no free agents. It's just internally figuring out what went wrong and and, and why did it go wrong, right? And we're probably going to do an episode, Carter, uh, coming out just on like, honestly, what went wrong this year? And there's a lot of things that didn't go good, but you know, there's some major things that completely turned this season on its head. Uh, so we got a lot to talk about. Um, you know, as we sort of said, game 162 is over. That's it. That's Toronto Blue Jays season. Um, and at the end of the day, I mean, we, we do this podcast every single day. Uh, this is, you know, what we think about. So we we are all immersed in Toronto Blue Jays land here. And uh, that's now sort of it sucks because it's taken away from us a little bit. So. Hopefully next year they bounce back. They come back with a vengeance and, and, you know, get into the playoffs and can somehow compete. But there's going to have to be a lot of st a lot of changes that happen as well. Absolutely. With where we're at, you can if you watched any games of the Toronto Blue Jays, you can tell what their shortcomings are. What they have as strong suits, which unfortunately is not a ton right now. But we'll go over one quickly. I'll just lay it out. The starting pitching. We'll talk about the starting pitching so much. We'll talk about this whole team. A lot of this next month is probably going to be reviewing the 2024 season, unfortunately, because that's all we're really going to have to talk about unless somehow, like you said, there is a contract extension. We're If it's live here, but we're going live. I'll, I'll say it right now. We'll be live for that. There's no way we're yeah. going to be missing that with you guys. Speaking of lives, we do appreciate uh, everyone that was able to make it up for the live stream today. Did end in a very weird way just because of our Wi-Fi. Decided just to crap out at literally the worst time ever. Our Jays game was lagging because everything, unfortunately for us now, is connected to the internet, which is 
not great when you think about it because the internet goes down. I think a lot of people would be on our boat and we probably wouldn't be in a great scenario. But the, the vibe I was kind of getting from the live stream, just uh, with talking with you, talking with Skylar, talking with our roommate Justin, is just a lot of us were just kind of relieved, almost this relief feeling of it being over. And it's, again, it's, it's like a, it's it's bitter. It's, it's, sour, it's sour, but it's also sweet. Again, there, there's good things, there's bad things. But at the end of the day, just a season to forget for the Toronto Blue Jays, but yeah, not nothing, uh, nothing excitable. Even from the people uh, in the comments about it, nobody was really had too many thing good things to say about this Toronto Blue Jays team, which uh, doesn't surprise me whatsoever. No, and and you don't expect anybody to have good feelings, but I guess you don't have. I thought that I'd feel a little bit more hopeful going into next year, but then you know you sort of get your feelings and your thoughts together, and again, we're gonna go over a bunch of offseason stuff, but I think. I, I expect it to feel more hopeful for next year. And I don't necessarily know if I do. I, I think I still have some and the free agent C is going to really help that out. Um, but right now it's, yeah, it's just dull. It's just, ah, okay, it's done. You know, it's, it's over. Let's move on. Um, you know, we're going to go, we're going to take a little break, Carter. Let's come back. Let's do um, some favorite moments, some big moments, everything like that. Just throughout the year, relive 2024 a little bit, because I feel like, uh, you know, when we get to 2025, I can't see anybody talking about the Blue Jays 2024 season. Today's episode brought to you by FanDuel. As you guys all know, we are huge FanDuel guys here at Locked On Blue Jays. We, you know, love placing bets and, and riding them together. And uh, we, we've been having a ton of fun. So when you get a hunch in the middle of a game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, so much more on the same page where you place your bets. You'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com. I always talk about the the live same-game parlays, the the live betting, and that's a huge component for FanDuel, why it's so awesome, is that I can just go on and pop right on and place a bet, middle of the game, middle of an at-bat, whatever I want to do. So go make sure you check that out, FanDuel. Dot com. So, Carter, I mean, this is where we are, my guy. You know, it's over. It's over. Let's do a little bit of a look back at this season, just at, at some of our favorite moments. Uh, if I if I have to ask you to pick one thing this entire season that was like your favorite Blue Jays moment, what are you going with? Uh, it's got to be Yusei Kikuchi, the body bag of the century, probably. Uh, again, don't know what he's doing in this moment. Uh, there's a foul ball uh, in, again, where, where was this game? I always forget. Was it the Coliseum? I think it was Oakland. Because for some reason, the bleachers, like the dugout's wide open. Like, and there's no other ballpark like it. So Yusei Kikuchi is just trying to get out of the way of the foul ball. But for some reason, just runs right at the fielder. Absolutely barrels him over. It's like a linebacker hitting a running back in the hole. One of the funniest things I've maybe ever seen on a baseball diamond. For me, it's, uh, it's Yusei Kikuchi being an NFL linebacker. Yeah, man. I, I like that one. I, I just remember seeing that. And I believe I was in New York at that time because I think it was you and Skyler that was on the podcast covering that one. And, uh, it was. and, uh, so again, I wasn't, I couldn't pay attention. You know, I was, I was sort of out about, so that's why Skyler was uh, popping in for me. Uh, thanks to him for popping in the live stream today. Had a blast. I mean, um, and and yeah, you see you see Kikuchi run this guy over. I'm like, oh my god! Like it was all over uh, Twitter and TikTok and Instagram, and uh, yeah, sort of a funny moment there from him. I, I you know, it, when stuff happens like that, nobody's seriously injured or anything. It, it is. It's just a hilarious moment. I remember the the podcast uh, title. I think was something was um, which player is going to the NFL or something like that. It was just great, great sort of moment there from you and Skyler. Uh, yeah, great moment. There's a ton of great moments, Carter. Um, when I look back over this season, I mean, I, it's, it's tough to pick, but I think for me, I'm going back to when me, you, Justin and Jarvis were all in Toronto and we got to witness live in the flesh, the Daniel Vogel back legacy game. It was just electric and everybody's up. I remember praying to God for the triple. It would have just, it would have just been unbelievable. Yeah, we would have been present for a Daniel Vogelback cycle. That might have been the most electric moment of all time. Yeah, the triple away from the cycle. What a moment. Just going back, looking at this team. Daniel Vogelback was once on the Toronto Blue Jays. That's going to be, uh, in 10 years, one of those random like jersey things where Daniel Vogelback is just in the Jays. And it's just like, oh, that's a really good edit. But obviously, he played with the Toronto Blue Jays. 
yeah, that's it's full of a year where there's not a lot of good moments. So I guess I'll go over another one just because, I mean, we, if we did a bad moments, we, we'd have, what, a month and a half of content? on the yes, podcast yes. we could just let's just go game by game if we're going to do bad moments but uh, another good moment one more so for the Jays' success was uh some of these prospects launching it was the joey lopervito uh, i can't remember who we were playing but uh, down four three in the ninth inning joey lopervito solo shot and tie up game first home run for the toronto blue jays and then asin barger comes up right next right after him another solo shot after rogers center walks off the baseball game that was a huge moment uh for the toronto blue jays fans for me especially that's one obviously i remember as i'm sharing with you guys right now and it was nice to see some of these prospects uh you were talking about hope before like it seemed like in that moment at least some people to some capacity were hopeful for the toronto blue jays maybe even for the 2024 season at that point but for their future with these prospects again the the storylines that we're going to be going over this offseason i guess if we could kind of lay them out right now uh what went, went wrong pretty much everything uh i i want to i for me it's george springer that's gonna be a huge storyline as well obviously you got the the contract stuff with vladimir grove jr bobuchet and then the bullpen those are the main storylines probably what we're going to be centered around a lot obviously things do happen these could be a big trade there could be a, a huge signing uh again something completely out of left field could happen as well so we're going to be reacting we're going to be figuring out uh, what this Toronto Blue Jays team is going to look like for 2025. So do you have any more uh, good moments to share or we kind of just that maybe there's only three? Yeah. Yeah. There's not a ton. Uh, but I mean, the, the big one, Carter, the one we just covered, the Alejandro Kirk triple. I mean, just an electric moment from a guy, uh, you know, that you, you don't get to see a ton of that from, you don't get to see it. I, I don't know. Just him sprinting around the bases. Just, I don't know. It, it'll put you in a good, good mood, no matter, you know, what's going on just uh seeing him run like that it was just it was hilarious a play that probably should have been an out turns into a triple and for Alejandro Kirk that's just unreal yeah uh, Brandon Lau just loses it in the lights you know, I love him. score one for the lights score one for Alejandro Kirk because I'm definitely going to remember that triple for a very long time I, I said about the uh percentile speed with Alejandro Kirk it's only getting better two percent second percentile the fifth percentile let's shoot for eight Let's go for eight next year. Well, Alejandro, Alejandro Kirk, uh, maybe maybe double digits even. Let's go crazy out there. But uh, yeah, it's always fun to see Alejandro Kirk running the bases. And it's because he goes full out. You can tell he's going maximum effort. Some guys just aren't as fast as other guys. But you can, you love to see effort. That's a huge thing in the MLB, especially just effort on the base paths. See, so often now, especially the first base, if there's a routine ground ball, nobody's running those out anymore. So it's nice to see Alejandro Kirk, even on a line drive like that, again, probably should have been caught in most regular conditions. He's hustling right out of the box. Uh, effort is a lot of the time something that uh, is not easily picked up by a lot of these uh, these baseball players, especially when uh, they're tenured in the league for a long amount of time. And some of them have uh, some pretty decently sized egos, uh, not exactly on the Toronto Blue Jays, but across the league, there are definitely a lot of those people. Uh, for for me, just uh, kind of the final thoughts just of this season. Um, the starting rotation, it's it's in a good spot as we kind of went over off camera as well it's going to be the bullpen and whether they do that through free agency, whether they do that uh, kind of the trial and error, as we've been seeing throughout this season, whether they don't address it at all and try to run it back, there's a million options that we're going to have to see. So just kind of where we're at is just, we're going to have to let this unfold in front of us and just uh, enjoy, I guess the playoff baseball that's on. Yeah, dude, it's uh, it, it is sad. It, it, and I think that that's the, sort of what probably everybody's getting out of this episode is that it's just, it sucks. It sucks when your team is not, contending and competing and it just it's it's not fun and don't get me wrong I think it's going to be quite a fun offseason here for us Carter um but you know at the end of the day you want to win you want your team to do well and uh you know hopefully that can continue for the Toronto Blue Jays into 2025 and and they can you know move past this I think is what the biggest thing is and and put this one behind them Absolutely. And one, uh, we were talking to Skyler on the live stream for the people that uh, weren't unfortunately able to make it there. He brought up a really good point about just, uh, again, we're not in this uh, this spectrum. We're not a part of this group because unfortunately we're not living in Toronto. We're not able to co cover the Toronto team from Toronto. We are outside of Toronto living in Winnipeg, Manitoba. But just the with Toronto being such a big city and so much going on there all the time, with how the Blue Jays have kind of trended, I know we've seen it with the podcast. We've seen it just with uh, the Rogers Center, with some of the attendances and stuff like that. And just on Twitter, how you can tell it's not as busy in Toronto Blue Jays land. And a big thing is of that is that in Toronto, there's so much going on. Why would you want to watch a team in the last month of the season that has nothing to play for and that's getting swept by the Miami Marlins? 
So credit to everyone that did stick through that uh, was on this ride with us that do you just almost pull their hair out as they are watching the Toronto Blue Jays games. But uh, credit to you guys for making it through because I know there's a lot of games that we were both watching that we really wanted to turn the TV off, especially when things weren't going well. But obviously we did stick it out. So just credit to anyone else that uh, was able to make it through the 162 Toronto Blue Jays ride with us. Yeah, and and honestly, it, it is crazy to see the amount of drop off from from the happenings in Toronto Blue Jays land. So, uh, yeah, for everybody that did stick around, it is fantastic, and, and we appreciate everybody who tunes into us every day and, and watches us, and you know gets their news, makes this like their Blue Jays sort of news site. We we appreciate that, and we will try to keep doing that through the off season, getting you guys everything we possibly can. Um, I remembered just, another moment. I, I just remembered oh, one. Uh, okay. Tim, Tim Meza being the bat boy uh, at the start of yes, the season. It was so long it. ago that I it just remembered it. Don't lose fantasy. That's that's the moral of the story. Don't uh, be an idiot in fantasy. But that was just hilarious. I like how the team can uh, have some moments like that and uh, just joke around a little bit on the baseball field at some points. But again, we said this in last offseason. We said throughout the entire season, it's more fun to have fun when you're winning. It's a lot easier to lo- watch people having fun when they're winning. One thing we saw this year, the Toronto Blue Jays didn't really have a lot of fun on the baseball field. I think that's fairly obvious to say. And I think now we might, for me anyway, I think I'm going to take back kind of what I said. I know I wasn't as extreme on this as you. I think we got to see people having fun on the baseball field. That was the last time the Toronto Blue Jays were at least enjoyable to watch. You go back to 2021, maybe things didn't go that well. You don't make the playoffs. But I had a whole lot of fun watching that Toronto Blue Jays baseball team. You look at this team, they're not having fun. We're not having fun. Nobody's really having fun. So let's get some more fun on the Toronto Blue Jays. Yeah, I mean, you know what? I'm I'm gonna hold my keep my reservations on that one. I'm not to not have that, fun. That might just be an emotional response by me. It's we're, we're right after the game. I I just haven't had fun watching the Blue Jays in a while. I want fun. Yeah, and and I feel that too. This game was terrible to watch. I mean, it, Ryan it Yarbrough awesome. did his thing. I know we haven't really gone over the series. We probably won't because they got swept by the Marlins. We got outscored in the first two games by 17 runs against the Marlins. Yeah, that's that's just where we're at. Who cares? Yeah. And at this point, I mean, it's over. The season's over. These games have now no impact on what's going to happen moving forward, right? Um, just before we sort of move on here, Carter, I know we got some stuff still to go over in segment three. We're going to talk just about the rest of the MLB and, and where do we see teams falling and and who do we think can go far and, may, and go the distance. Um, but uh, I wanted to thank everybody that has come on this podcast this season. Uh, shout out Justin Powers, uh, Jarvis Uwasco, my brother, Skylar Peters, Dallin Wilton. Uh, we had uh, a bunch of people sort of on throughout, but uh, to everybody that, you know, popped in and, and made this show happen every day and, and did their part, we uh, we really do appreciate it. Carter, uh, also, we appreciate all of the people listening to us as, as well. Uh, we appreciate that you make us your first listen. Make sure you go and check out Locked on MLB. Make them your second listen every day because host Paul Sullivan Sully does a great job. Uh, so check him out as well. We'll take a quick break, Carter. We'll be right back and we'll talk about the rest of the MLB in the entirety. Today's episode brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, uh, create an account, and uh, use code locked on MLB for $20 off your first purchase. As I always talk about, Game Time is just the best ticketing app that I've ever seen because it gives you the picks right there. You, you know what tickets are available. Game Time has a new feature called Game Time Picks that makes getting tickets for your favorite live events easy. Game Time Picks filters out the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. Uh, as well, I mean, I always talk about all of their you know, benefits to using this. They have their seat views, which, you know, you get a panoramic view from your seat in the app before you buy. They have the lowest price guaranteed, or they'll credit you 110% of the difference. And they have ticket coverage as well. So download the, take the guesswork out of buying tickets down with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code locked on MLB for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply again. Create an account and use code L O C K E D O N M L B for $20 off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? Game Time. So, Carter, we've got we've sort of gone back and forth, moments, feelings, everything to sort of wrap up this 2024 season for the Toronto Blue Jays. Um, what I want to know when we take a look at sort of the entirety of the league, um, who are you going for? Who are you cheering for now, or who are you sort of putting your uh, your bets on, or who are you backing going into the uh, playoffs here? 
In the grand scheme of things, at the end of the day, I really don't care. I'm going to say, flat out say, if it's not the Yankees, I don't care. As long as the Yankees don't win. But I do have some teams I'd rather see, obviously, win. Like, for me, I, I don't want to see the Astros win. Don't want to see the uh, Orioles win. Other than that, in the AL, if it's the Guardians, if it's the Tigers. I actually, if I have to pick an AL team, it would be the Tigers. How can you not get excited about that baseball team? Yeah. Such a fun stretch they went on. That's what we were hoping for from a Toronto Blue Jays standpoint. You saw the deadline, then you go on a little 31 and 11 run <laughs> to end off the year. That's uh, that's something that will definitely play. But for me, it's yeah, it'd be the Detroit Tigers. I mean, that'd be a fun team. Uh, I think the, the it looks like the standings were actually settled. So it looks like the Tigers will be taking on the Astros. Don't love that matchup for them, but I wouldn't love anyone's matchup really against the Astros, especially with uh, their talent levels and just their experience in the playoffs. And then the Royals will be taking on the Orioles, which I think will be a very interesting uh, situation there as well. For the NL, uh, I'm just going to quickly kind of go over what the uh, scenario is over there because the AL is completely locked up. Everything is decided. Okay, well, with the NL, it's a little bit different. The AL is obviously figured out. We have went over the matchups. The NL is still open. So the D-backs have the least likely odds of making it. They need either the Mets or the Braves to get swept in their doubleheader. If one of those teams gets swept, the Diamondbacks will be in the playoffs. So the Braves just can't get swept. That, that's all. They, they have the tiebreaker. They have the best chance of making it with the Mets. If they win one game, they will be in. And with the Mets, it's sort of the same thing as well. If, as long as the Mets don't get swept, they'll be fine. If they get swept, obviously the D-backs will jump them. So really, if you're a D-backs fan, you need a lot of good things to happen here. Again, these, you're lucky that these two teams are in the same division. They will be battling it out. So uh, that will be interesting down the stretch. So obviously there's uh, there's a little bit of an animosity there, as we uh, we should have saw from the Toronto Blue Jays, trying to, we, at least we ended the, uh, the Red Sox hopes there. But uh, down the stretch, uh, I said I want the Tigers to win for the AL, for the NL. Probably the Padres. I wouldn't mind the Mets winning as well. Do you have a team that you're looking closely at for the playoffs? I mean, like you said, the, the the Tigers are just the story itself. It would be a cool one to sort of cap off with a, with the championship. But uh, I think overly, Carter, I've always been a little bit of a Brewers guy. Uh, I've sort of all, just had a little bit. I don't know why. I went to one game as a kid, and now it sort of stuck with me a little bit. So, uh, you know, I guess they're in there. I'll probably cheer for them. Uh, you know, as much as I'm going to cheer for any other team that's not the Blue Jays. So, whatever. I mean, I don't really care. Like you said, I don't want the Yanks to win. I don't want the Orioles to win. Don't want the Astros to win. So, besides that, I mean, I just want to go watch some fun baseball. And hopefully, it's there a good couple series that are, you know, make it interesting to watch some baseball. We'll have to wait and see. That's uh, something that, well, that's all we can do, unfortunately. And <laughs> so, uh, just wait and watch baseball. That is not the Toronto Blue Jays. Toronto Blue Jays aren't in the playoffs. Like, I think this is kind of universal as a fan experience. Who really cares? Again, playoff anything is really fun to watch, whether it's hockey, whether it's football, baseball, you name it. If, uh, if your favorite team's not in, it's kind of whatever. Again, like you said, just want to see good baseball. I like the AL series. I like the, the matches that they do have in there and the way it's all laid out. I am so ready for a Yankees collapse. That bullpen is it's terrible. Yeah, they suck. Yeah, that it's, bullpen I mean, terrible. We're not we're not one to comment on how good a bullpen is, but it's we know what a bad bullpen looks like. The Yankees bullpen is not that good. So it's gonna be interesting to see how that works in the playoffs. The Texas Rangers bullpen sucked last year too. They won the World Series. So again, you thought you think you need a good bullpen, you can score a million runs. You're probably gonna be fine. But Judge is historically not as good in the regular or in the playoffs as he is in the regular season. Tough to carry a playoff or a team through the playoffs for 16 wins. I guess it's not 16 wins. It's not hockey. But uh, anyways, you got anything else to add uh, before we do head off for the season? Uh, no, Carter. I mean, hopefully everybody sticks around. We got a ton coming in the off season. We have so much planned. It's actually like insane. Like <laughs> the amount of stuff we have to do in this off season. Um, we're going to have some great guests. We've already got a ton of them booked. Hopefully a special one coming your way. Not sure when, but it, but it's coming. Make sure you guys go check out the shop. Get something if you think something looks cool. Support. It helps support us. Um, and honestly, we just want to see, you know, how many people actually love the podcast. And if you're wearing our stuff, we, you know, if we see you out and about, we'll come over and say hi. Because, uh, you know, that's what we all are. We're all Blue Jays fans. So, uh, as we're sort of in this together. It was a season. Game 162. It's over. It, it's done. I'm looking forward to next year. I'm looking forward to this offseason. It's going to be a blast. We're into NHL now. We're into uh, NFL football. I mean, 
there's a lot to be excited about MLB playoffs. I mean, if, if not for us, but you know, for other people, it's going to be fun probably. Um, but besides that Carter, my man, I, I don't know. Uh, that's, that's all I got. That's all I got. Yeah. We just got to hope that the off season is a little bit more enjoyable than the season was. Uh, one unfortunate thing about the off season is that usually you're looking at who you can resign for the Toronto Blue Jays. Maybe some of these expiring contracts will come back. We got Ryan Yarborough. That's it. It's the only guy that uh, is on an expiring contract. So I guess in a sense, that could be nice as well. You'll see a bunch of new faces uh, from free agency, stuff like that. Assuming Ross Atkins does actually sign some guys during free agency. We're going to have to see. We're going to be uh, along for this roller coaster ride. Hope Again, it can't be much worse in the season. Hopefully we can take some W's in the off season. But like I said, thank you guys for watching, like, support. Everything recently has been awesome. But yeah, we have a big plan for the offseason. Again, like I said, some guests. We have a bunch of episodes already planned out. Finally, we're at the offseason, where we can talk about the offseason uh, off on the live stream. We were talking about living in the moment, but Skyler said it the best. Living in the moment with the Toronto Blue Jays sucks. Well, not, we're not going to live in the moment anymore. Let's move on to the future. Thank you guys for watching. We'll talk to you guys tomorrow.